good morning. Good morning. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. We trust that you are well on this glorious, fantastic, excuse me, Tuesday morning. I don't have my regular chair. Here. Um, it's being repaired. Uh, so this is the kitchen table chair that's kind of uncomfortable. So I'll be scooting around. I trust, again, trust that you are well this glorious Tuesday morning. It's a little chilly here. Um, it's been a little chilly here the past week, you know, a few days in the uh, West Central Florida area. Uh, right now it's uh, noon or so, almost noon. It's only like 67 degrees. Now I know where you live. It's been, you know, negative 400 degrees with a with a, with a 1,000 negative degree uh, wind chill factor. Uh, but ne- but 67 degrees is pretty chilly here. And it was in the 30s um, early, early this morning and late last night. So we're coming out of it, though. It's supposed to be in the mid-70s today and the mid-80s tomorrow, so, or the low 80s tomorrow. So Florida winters, baby. you got to love them. Uh, it is... An interesting time. Interesting time. Uh, we're not going to cover this story, but I want you, and I'm going to put the link, uh, I'm going to put the link to the story down in the description box because I want you to follow this story. Um, there's a story on townhall.com um, concerning um, two people that adopted some children and are using those children as sex, as sex objects. It's a very sordid, awful story. Um, but I want you to have access to it because you're not going to see it in social. You're not going to see it on regular social media. You're not going to see it on the news, you know, on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or whomever. Uh, so it's this story happening in Georgia uh, and uh, Town Hall is covering with a four part series. And I want you to have access to, access to it. So I'm going to put it down in the description box. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to stop talking. I'm going to stop talking a little bit about 2024 and talk about what's happening now. Uh, Your girl, Sheila uh, Jackson Lee, Democrat from Texas, is at it again. She's at it again. And uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, Good news, abortions in one state after the the pushback of Roe v. Wade are actually down to almost nothing. That's a good thing. Uh, Eric Adams, the um, the, uh, president... The mayor of New York went to El Paso, and he was and he, and he told people there that New York is full up, no more room, no more room at the end for New York, and we'll tell you why he did that. Um, and a federal court has given um, my governor uh, Ron DeSantis. A- well, hey everybody, my name is Willie Lawson, and. Um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet and you may think with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to Parler that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices and you'd be right they most certainly are Um, but you know what it isn't as bad as you think it is it's worse, but there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech. One of those, one of those places is freedomforum.website. Freedomforum.website. You can go there and speak your mind. So come join us. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the fun. If you are a true blue conservative, small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or phone number. My florist is Bloomingdale's Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 6835 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web 
at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that it's not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. DBCTampa.com A website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at TBCTampa.com And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at TBCTampa.com My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. Welcome back. Last week, uh, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, from, from Texas, introduced a bill that was so ridiculously absurd, it had people asking if it was real. Now, the thing is, of course it's real, because this is the kind of thing that her constituency wants her to do. And this is this is the, the insane, absurd part. This is the kind of things that her consist, that her um, constituency actually wants her to do. Um, as evidence on the pages, you can read this on the um, on the con- congress.gov page. Um, I'll put that link in the description box below so you can have access to it yourself. Um, the bill um, in question, uh, HR 61, is also known as the Leading Against White Supremacy Act of 2023. It seeks to amend Title 18 of the US, United States Code to expand the, co- uh, the scope of hate crimes. Now, it would criminalize the conspiracy to commit white supremacy. So this is directed against, that is, that is directed against non-white people. This would include inspiring or influencing people to commit such crime based on having published materials advancing white supremacy. So if you have publishing published materials that says white people are better than blah, 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 then that's a federal crime. White supremacist ideology, not sure how you, I'm not sure, or anyway, uh, antagonism based on replacement theory or hate speech that vilifies or or is otherwise directed against any non-white person or group. Material published on social media platforms is mentioned as well. So if you're if you mention anything about black folks or non-white folks, if you're white, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee wants you wants you up on charges. Um, Ian Miles um, Chang. I'm sorry, I was almost sneezing. Um, tweeted this. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee has introduced a bill um, to criminalize conspiracy to commit white supremacy, whichever that is, which, which includes any criticism of non-white people that influences, such as something published or sent online, uh, someone has committed a hate crime. While the bill's text mentions the Department of Justice, the DOJ website has already I already have a section on hate crime prosecutions. The role of the DOJ is is also relevant and potentially concerning in the in that the Biden administration has reportedly pressured the FBI to overtake the amount of domestic terror cases um, and incidents of white supremacy. Uh, the bill isn't likely to go anywhere in the House, uh, of course, and that's now controlled by the Republican Party. Um, but it still speaks to the priorities of members like Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, our friends at Twitchy highlighted some of the uh, best responses to Ian Miles' um, uh, screenshot of the bill, including uh, when it comes to concerns with the First Amendment. 
um, further, uh, a further, other users have wondered what it means when attacks on Blacks, such as Black conservatives, uh, don't come from white people as a matter of white supremacy, but from other Black people. Uh, somebody tweeted, who wants to tell her about the First Amendment? You want to tell her? I don't want to tell her. Uh, this kind of bill be prohibited? I think so. Um, so somebody else tweeted, it harms political discussion and presentation of results, uh, not to mention it's unconstitutional and that the end, uh, and that's the end of the question. It is truly unconstitutional. The First Amendment is really difficult when you're as stupid as Representative Lee, that was from President Doctor, uh, from Mark Ashworth. Boy, I have got a long list of people who ain't gonna like uh, that bill if its consequences are applied across the board, but they're not. But they're not, and that's the thing. They're not. Um, Jure um, mentioned that Tim Scott gets called Uncle Tom by progressives. Okay. The congressman has responded to criticisms about the law by hitting back at fellow member Representative Lauren um, Boebert in a thread that includes over a dozen tweets Representative Jackson Lee sought to try to defend her bill and brought uh, the, of course, Dr. King and his legacy into the discussion. While Jackson Lee strongly mocks Boebert in her description of the bill, it's worth reminding us that the another person who has pointed out who's pointed to concerns about the First Amendment includes Harriet K. Dillon, who's an attorney. Uh, we um, read one of her tweets. So, so this thing goes back and forth between Sheila Jackson Lee. And you know what? And frankly, we know that this bill isn't going anywhere. This is something that Sheila Jackson Lee can use to try to get elected, re-elected. Oh, well, she doesn't really need to because her district is a district that she's going to run uh, when and she's going to run and she's going to get elected as long as she wants to. What this does, this should give you a lesson that this this is who these people are. Uh, I, I, I used this the other day while talking to uh, a former student of mine. Once somebody shows you who they are, believe them, this is who she is. She's not a serious person. Sheila Jackson Lee is not a serious person. But she can be a dangerous person. Because she continues feeding into the division. She, she actually benefits from it. The continued division. If I were to if I could step into these shoes, and maybe I shouldn't, but if I could, I would tell all my white friends, and I mean this, and I'm going to say this in a way that it, you, you, you don't think I mean it, but I do. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Don't answer to it. Don't comment. Pretend it never happened. Because she can only be dangerous if she's taken seriously and she's not serious. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the Morning Report. The Morning Report is brought to fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. We'll be back right after these messages. So is it okay now, because it was, I mean, during the Trump administration, it's okay to talk about the president's... Um, yeah. We talked about mental health elderly, so let's talk about this guy, mental the health. Me, you know, the president's mental acuity, because it's, there's sometimes where it seems to be lacking. Have you seen... Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes sometimes it's especially bad. I mean, I'm talking about sometimes it's, it's like really bad. Like, have you seen the picture? I was told not to take any questions. <laughs> I was told not to take any questions. Any questions. They told they're going to be mad at me. They're going to be mad at me, they, uh, Mr. President. Are you the president? Or are you? Or are you five? You, you see what I want. See the, the next question is. Um, excuse me, I was Ms. told. President? I was told to call on what you yes. call on for C for NBC. 
Who's telling you to call on? That's the question that we ought to be asking. Who's telling you this? I mean, I, I don't understand no, why no, nobody won't ask that question. Is Jen Psaki Psaki actually the president? Who's telling you to call on these people in the media? Is Jen Psaki actually the president? Uh, probably so. Oh, welcome back. Again, my name is Willie Lawson. Trust that you are well. Uh, the temperature is not rising. <laughs> it's still 67 degrees out there. And the thing is, it's funny uh, when you live in a house, and our house was built in the 80s, uh, where we're doing the where we're doing this, uh, doing this from, from my home office. And um, there was decent um, insulation. And a few years ago, um, Tico, our electric company, came in and blew some new insulations probably about four or five years ago blew some in maybe longer blew some insulation in new insulation into the ceiling into the roof and um what happens is is that the insulation works that technology works uh because when it's cold outside when the house finally does cool off it takes longer for it to heat up again so you're so the house so the temperature of the house is always trailing uh, the temperature of the out, outside temperature. So it's nice outside, but it's still cold inside. And it takes a while for the house to catch up to the outside. And we have trees, so it takes even longer. So, by the way, we have trees. So stop calling me about solar. I'm not cutting down my trees for solar. Stop calling me. Oh, yeah, and if you want to buy my house, Offer to start at $10 million. So stop calling me. Stop texting me. Stop sending things to my phone. Stop sending things to my house. Uh, this property is available for $10 million. If you're in, call me. If you're not in, don't call me. I'm getting tired of that. Are you getting tired of that? Me too. You know what I'm not getting tired of? I'm not getting tired of winning. Last summer, the United States Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, um, the landmark, landmark case in 1973 that legalized abortion in the United States. Uh, in the case Dobbs v. Jackson's w w Women's Health Organization, the court overturned the, the precedent. Uh, Dobbs was a lawsuit over a pro-life law in Mississippi, and the abortion clinic that had brought the legal challenge has since been closed down. Yes. Now, a new study uh, shows that abortions in one conservative state have stopped almost entirely. According to, to, to stats um, from the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, abortions in Texas have plunged 99% in the months after the Dobbs rule. On January 3rd, um, the Texas Right to Life organization tweeted that there were only three abortion clinics reported in Texas in August of 2022 due to medical emergencies. Well, three abortions reported in Texas, in the entire state of Texas. According to the group's website, there were no elective abortions during this time. Here's their tweet from the Texas Right to Life. Uh, breaking, official reports show that there were only three abortions reported in Texas in August 2022, all due to medical emergencies. We still have work to do to stop illegal abortions, especially pills, traffic over the border and online, but this shows life-saving progress. Now we're gonna, now not today, but we're gonna talk about um, some of these pills. We're going to get into some of these pills that are uh, being trafficked in and there are people who want them available over the counter, but we'll talk about them at some other time. Right now we're celebrating this victory. Compared to one year ago, there were 5,706 elective abortions recorded in the state according to the Texas Right to Life. Advancements in medical technology have greatly reduced the situations where mothers and the child are at risk, but in rare and heartbreaking circumstances, a woman's pregnancy can endanger her life. The death of the child um, is an indirect result of a life-saving intervention for the mother, um, Texas Right to Life wrote. We mourn the loss of these three children who tragically could not be saved last year, but we are grateful the doctors rightly protected the mothers uh, rather than losing both precious lives. The Texas Right to Life 
also added that as many as 50,000 babies have been saved since uh, September of last year. Before the Dobbs decision, Texas lawmakers enacted a heartbeat law. We know about that. We, we, we've talked about that here. Uh, that outlawed abortions after fetal after the fetal heartbeat was detected. Now, we know that there are there were those gubernatorial candidates from Georgia who who thought who, who told us that there was no such thing as a fetal heartbeat. It was a it was a man-made sound to fool people. Yeah, she doesn't want to be governor, but that's okay. Um, for most pregnancies, this occurs at around six weeks. The law was challenged at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court allowed the law to stay in place and sent the case back to the lower courts. So on top of that, they were able to push abortions down to three reported abortions. Now, legal abortions that we are still going to have to do a lot of work in um, ferreting out those abortions now that are illegal. Not only in Texas, but everywhere in the country. But in the meantime, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we can take a little break. We'll be back with more of the program right after these messages. Sure, we are we good? Are we good? And we're good. All right. Anyway, thank you so much for coming to the Morning Report. The Morning Report is production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. We are thrilled that you are with us on this glorious day. Um, giving you the, 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 the continuing weather report is the same. It's sunny out, it's pretty, it's a beautiful day. We're, we're definitely going to get out in it, get out in it in a little bit. Uh, but it's a beautiful Tuesday. Uh, how is your 2023 going? How's it going so far? I know we're all 17 days in. Yeah, that's crazy that we're 17 days in. Uh, but uh, how's it going? Yeah, for us, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good. And uh, we are looking for um, massive improvement as we take massive action uh, in this year to um, get some get some great benefits to um, the things that we need to do. Uh, again, hope that you are well, that you are, 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 are doing well. All right. Um, you know this dude, Eric Adams? Ever heard of him? Yeah. Mayor Eric, mayor Eric Adams is the mayor of New York City. Uh, he traveled to El Paso, Texas, to get a first-hand look at the crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. And he basically said the Biden, Biden administration needs to do more because his city has New York City, the one, one of the largest cities in America, uh, has no more room. We're all full up. The hotels are full. Well, he's all full up because they don't want to deal with it anymore. Adam said cities like El Paso, Chicago and Washington, D.C., along with New York, do not deserve what is happening to them, like buses being sent from Texas to sanctuary cities. Stop, full stop. You can't be a sanctuary city if you're not going to give people sanctuary. How can you be a sanctuary city if you're not going to give people sanctuary? How can you proudly declare yourself a sanctuary city 
and win votes if indeed you are not going to offer sanctuary. Now, offering sanctuary a lot of times is, is not easy. It isn't easy. You have to be put out a little bit. You know, you have to, you know, share your space. This is why all the sanctuary city stuff is disingenuous at the very at the very least. It's disingenuous. Okay. The state's busing program was created to in order to take the pressure off of overwhelmed services in border towns in you know on the southern border. There are no big cities with the sort of resources that New York have anywhere across our southeastern border, our southwestern border. There's not one New York or Los Angeles or Chicago along the border there with that level that level of resource. Just there's, there's, there's not one. So some of these small towns are just getting taken back by Mexico, basically. So here's what he says. Oh, uh, our, our cities are being undermined. We don't deserve this. Migrants don't deserve this. And the people who live in the cities don't deserve this. Asylum seekers who are, are be, being given the false impression that if you come to New York, everything is fine. There's no more room in New York. Adam said in a press conference. Well, no, what New York is saying is that we're in a, we're in a, a sanctuary city. What Los Angeles is saying is that we're a sanctuary city. What Chicago is saying, we're a sanctuary city. What San Francisco is saying, we're a sanctuary city, which means that you can have sanctuary here. You can go there and everything is going to be fine. That's what it's, that's what it means. Martha, Martha's Vineyard, says we're a sanctuary city. That's what that means. Do you not know the meaning of words or are you just a bald-faced, bold-faced liar? I'm thinking it's the second one. El Paso experienced a massive surge in illegal uh, crossings in December of last year. But crossings have decreased in recent weeks after the Texas National Guard set up razor wire and fencing along the Rio Grande. They're building a wall. Uh, nevertheless, the surge resulted in hundreds of illegal immigrants sleeping on the streets of El Paso because local shelters were full and people did not surrender to border uh, patrol and did not have documentation. So if, you know, I want to ask the mayor, and I'm sure someone did. So if New York is full, then what is El Paso? And how did this, how did this continue? Well, it's very, very easy. It's very, very easy. When the Biden administration end, ended the stay in Mexico policy because, and only because, it was Trump era policy. It caused that ripple to start happening through Mexico and Central America in the South America that started it all over again. It had settled down. But asylum seekers were staying in Mexico and having their cases heard before coming, before being able to allow be allowed to come into the country. The stay in Mexico policy didn't end asylum seeking. No, 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 no. It made it manageable or more manageable. You can't seek asylum because your country sucks. And I, 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 I and this is super important. Just because your country sucks and your government where you are sucks, that's not the reason why you can just come here in mass or go anywhere in mass. Are you are you angry with how things are going here on here in America? Then just go to Man go, go to France and just live there. See how long that lasts. Then just go to Australia or New Zealand and just live there forever. 
See how long that lasts before they send your butt home. Eric Adams is it, it was in El Paso to get a, a, a view of the the border situation and be able to say something so the administration did not have to admit failure. He was there so the administration, so Kamala Harris and Joe Biden did not have to admit failure. Someone else needed to go and say, there's something up here. We need to do something. So those two people I mentioned didn't have to admit it was their fault. That things were fine before. Or better. Another one, it was never fine. That's why Eric Adams had to go. Will anything be done? By this administration, not anything that we want to be done. Not at all. Not at all. What are we going to do? Well, Texas has employ, uh, uh, employed the National Guard. Florida has employed their National Guard. Um, California isn't going to. Arizona needs to, but they're not going to. All the border, all those people, all the folks along the border need to employ their National Guard. Their National Guard, which the governors have right and the um, the ability and the authority to do to protect their own borders, is a tenth. It's a tenth amendment thing, kids. It's a tenth amendment thing. All right, uh, we're going to come back with one more story uh, after this break. I hope that you're having a good time here. Thank you ever, ever so much. Uh, we'll be back right after this. So is it okay now, because it was, I mean, during the Trump administration, is it okay to talk about the president's... Um, yeah. We talked about mental health elderly, so let's talk about this guy's mental the health. Me, you know, the president's mental acuity, because it's there's sometimes where it seems to be lacking. Have you seen... Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes sometimes it's especially bad. I mean, I'm talking about sometimes, it's, it's like really bad. Like, have you seen the picture? I was told not to take any questions. <laughs> I was told not to take any questions. questions. They told they're going to be mad at me. They're going to be mad at me. They, uh, Mr. President, are you the president? Or are you or are you five? You, you see what I want. See the, the next question is. Um, you, I was Mr. told. President? I was told to call on what you're going to see for NBC. Who's telling you to call on? That's the question that we ought to be asking. Who's telling you this? I mean, I, I don't understand no, why no, nobody won't ask that question. Is Jen Psaki Mr. actually the president? Who's telling you to call on these people in the media? Is Jen Psaki actually the president? Uh, probably so. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back to the program. We appreciate you being here. Uh, again, this is the Morning Report. The Morning Report is production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Um, you can get to the website at FightBackMedia.com. Uh, and one of those great shirts is the, the non-compliance um, T-shirts are available at the website. Just go, You just go and click on the very top, and then you can purchase them there. Uh, the idea is that we are not going to back down. A lot of times, uh, conservatives, when things seem to be better, uh, we have a tendency to back off the pressure, and that is our biggest tactical error. The idea is never to back down, never to stop pushing, and we want to make sure that everybody understands that we are, that you know we got through this COVID time, and we're not going to, we're not going back. We are not going. Back. No more cloth masks forever. We are pushing forward, and no, we're not going to. We're, we're not going to simply comply to your nonsense. No, we're not going to. We're, we are never going to pull back. We're going to push forward. Never going to pull back. We're going to push forward all the time. We're going to push to the benefits of liberty. That's what we're going to do. And again. You know, if sometimes you can't say anything, we all let our t-shirts do the talking, right? Let our t-shirts do the, 
that our teachers do the talking. There we are. Uh, Governor, Governor Ron DeSantis, my dude, uh, Republican Florida, just keeps winning. A federal judge in Florida handed DeSantis a win after it ruled that the governor's administration did not violate a court order regarding the state's Stop Woke Act, which prohibits, well, prohibits colleges from teaching critical race theory and other woke concepts. Although the court, the court would not, according to the, to the judge, would not hesitate to compel compliance with a preliminary injunction, um, the court finds that, uh, that there has been no violation of the injunction at this time. That was from um, appointed U.S. Judge uh, Mark Walker. Uh, plaintiffs had argued that DeSantis failed to comply with a preliminary injunction that prevents the enforcement of some parts of the law, citing a memo sent out by the Florida's Chief of Office Policy and Budget, Chris Spencer, asking universities to provide a list of all staff, programs, and campus activities related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and critical race theory. Walker had previously called the new law positively dystopian, uh, issuing a temporary injunction. But well, what but I'm guessing they found out is this. Hey, listen, how are you going to find out what people are teaching unless you get a list of who these people are and what they're teaching? You get a list that we can look at and go, ah, nah, can't do that. Right? As opposed to what we've done so far is giving is the, the state-run, uh, univer- taxpayer-run universities free reign over everything they do, uh, although that free reign uh, ba- basically bites the hand that feeds them all the time. In November, Walker wrote, Walker wrote, our professors are critical to a healthy democracy. We keep saying the word democracy. We don't have a democracy. We have a republic. We don't have time to go over that right now, but what do I keep saying? They keep using the word democracy. Uh, and the state of Florida's decision to choose which viewpoints are worthy of illumination and which must remain in the shadows has implications for us all. If our priests of democracy are not allowed, because they're the priests of democracy, these, these leftist socialist professors are somehow been elevated by the judge in this statement doing exactly what he's claiming the governor was doing. He raises their status so they can be illuminated, uh, are not allowed to shed light on the challenging ideas that democracy will die in darkness. You've heard that before. Washington Post, that's exactly right. DeSantis's press secretary, uh, Brian Griffin, defended the law, arguing that DeSantis is doing his part in ensuring that college students are protected from the left's progressive push to brainwash them. The governor, as the chief executive of the state, has every right to ask how public dollars are being spent by public state entities, like state colleges and universities. In fact, this good government. Since the beginning of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic, parents have been made more aware of what schools are teaching kids. In 2022, 39% of bills targeted higher education and can compare to 30% in 2021. According to a survey of 20,000 students across 55 colleges, there is a liberal bias within higher education. 50% of college students identify as liberal compared to 26 who, who were conservatives. The thing is that these schools have been getting away with whatever the hell they wanted, telling telling students, uh, you know what, and, and and creating environments however they wanted to create these environments. Yes, that's what they've been doing all this time. And now someone is saying, no, 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 and now they're freaking out because. They are like kids. They don't like to be told, no, we're not doing that anymore. I'm telling you, teachers and education is the worst. If you can find a way, somehow, to pull your kid out of public school, do so. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can homeschool. Not everybody should homeschool, frankly. And I've 
and I and I have not been a big proponent of home homeschooling for that very reason. I don't believe everybody can or should. But if you can, you should. You can pull your kid out of school, out of public schools. You should. If you can put them in a private or parochial or Christian school, do. After doing your work, after doing your due diligence. Because they're not all built the same. Just because it says blah, 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 Christian Academy doesn't mean that it is. You know what I'm saying? Just because it says blah 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 charter school doesn't doesn't mean that they are free from the indoctrination. It doesn't mean that. So my my you know my advice to you is if that you could if you could pull your kid out and offer them another alternative, do that. Especially if you are still paying for it. All right, gotta get out of here. Uh, again, thank you again. My name is Willie Lawson. This has been the Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. So we see you again. Go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness sakes, take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.